Inerasable Crimes of Japan The year 1905 Japanese militarism left inerasable criminal traces in the history of the Korean nation. Having inherited their notorious ancestors, the contemporary Japanese reactionaries are now desperately trying to erase Japan's crimes by revising the history textbook in an all-round way. High-ranking officials of Japan thronged the Yasuguni Shrine where the mortuary tablets of war criminals are preserved to give impetus to the revival of militarism, while the right-wing extremists, on the other hand, put on the blood-stained uniforms of the old Japanese army and showed up in front of the shrine. Without the slightest reflecting on the past, the militarists are repeating crimes and rushing headlong along the road of overseas expansion. Referring to the blatant aggressive nature of Japan, Ho Zong Ho, academician of the Korean History Society, has this to say. <laughs> Japan must apologize and compensate for its past crimes against the Korean people. It, however, is making a brazen-faced scheme to distort its history of crimes and cover them up. The greatest crime committed by Japan against the Korean nation is to have extorted Korea's state sovereignty in a burglarious manner. In the latter half of the 19th century, the imperialist powers competed with each other to turn the Korean peninsula into their colony. The sly Japanese took the way to invading Korea backed by the United States. Accustomed to gain benefits with the backing of a big nation, Japan concluded the Taft Katsura Agreement on July 29, 1905, to obtain the U.S. agreement to their occupation of Korea in return for recognizing the U.S. occupation of the Philippines. Japanese aggressors swarming into Korea. Ito Hirobumi, who had become the chairman of the Privy Council of Japan after his four successive terms as Prime Minister, came to Seoul in mid-November 1905, allegedly to console the royal family of Korea. Ito had already worked out a draft treaty to deprive Korea of its rights to diplomacy. He entered the royal palace and made threats and blackmail. The draft was run through with burglarious demands that a Japanese resident general be appointed to rule the whole of Korea the diplomatic affairs of Korea transferred to Japan and not an agreement concluded with any other country without permission of Japan. Emperor Kozong, the Korean sovereign of the treaty, flatly refused to sign it, saying, Conclusion of the treaty leads to national ruin. 
even if I abdicate and die for my country, I can never sign it. At this, Ito clamored, This is an immovable draft. If you refuse, our imperial government will act as it has decided. With the Korean emperor absent and the opposing ministers dispelled, he fabricated the illegal treaty at the Toksu royal palace. The original text of the treaty has neither the Korean emperor's signature nor the stamp of the royal seal. In an attempt to soothe down the anti-Japanese sentiment of the Korean people, the cunning Japs let their officials and wives wear Korean clothes and brought the traitors to the nation and their wives to Japan to infuse them with pro-Japanese ideas. The Japanese imperialists made Riwanyong, Son Byung-sun, and other pro-Japanese traders submit an application for annexation and on August 22, 1910 invented a treaty on annexation with the Riwanyong cabinet thus turning Korea into their full colony. At the sight of the Japanese flag on the Gyeongbok Imperial Palace, the Korean people wailed aloud with the sorrow of national ruin. The materials showing the brutal massacre of the Korean anti-Japanese fighters by the Japanese imperialists still stir the Korean people to surging indignation. From the first day of occupation of Korea, the Japanese imperialists set up the most barbarous military police system. They built 17 prisons with 11 branches across Korea and ruthlessly put down the resistance against Japan. The West Gate prison in Seoul was a symbol of the oppressive policy of Japan. Here, the Japanese hangmen killed a large number of Korean patriots and innocent people by the most brutal and truculent tortures beyond imagination. passages through which Japanese jailers took out the corpses of those who were killed without trial and the execution ground. The Japanese imperialists plundered lots of cultural assets of Korea. A lecturer at the Korean Central History Museum says, Having learned that a great deal of treasures were in the tomb of King Gongmin, the 31st king of the Koryo dynasty, 
The Japanese aggressors dug up the tomb in 1905 and took the remains in it by dint of over 10 carriages. Japan organized grave digging groups with policemen and dug up more than 1,400 tombs of the Koguryo dynasty around Pyongyang alone and 2,000 old tombs in Kaesong, Hezu and Kangwon province. They carried to Japan all of the cultural assets associated with the distinguished talents of the Korean ancestors. The Japanese imperialists were hell-bent on eradicating the excellent national traditions of Korea. They burnt history books on King Tangun, as well as biographies and patriotic publications telling about Ulchi Mundok, Ri Sun-shin, and other patriotic military commanders, and forced the disobedient newspapers to close. They made the children learn Japanese as mother tongue at school and forced the Korean people to change their names into Japanese. In August 1910, they proclaimed the Order of Land Investigation to plunder the Korean peasants of one million hectares of fertile land and distribute them to the East Colonization Company and Japanese landlords. During their occupation of Korea, they took away 39 million tons of white rice. They took cotton, insum, tobacco, and all other resources to Japan. Every year, they seized hundreds of thousand cows, the greatest property of the Korean peasants then. They also cut thick trees at random and carried them to Japan across the Korean Straits. The Japanese imperialists developed Eunjul, Hasong, Kapsan, Unsan and Sangdong and other mines across Korea and plundered nearly 400 tons of gold, 17,980,000 tons of iron and other natural resources such as copper, graphite and magnesite. They also drafted by force more than 8,400,000 men, virtually most of the young and middle-aged people of Korea, to allocate to the most difficult and back-breaking underground work and construction sites. Looking back on it, a Korean resident in Japan says in bitter tears that he was forced to do an intolerable slave work. In 1944, right before their defeat, the Japanese 
took more than 350,000 Koreans to Nagano Prefecture for the construction of the underground headquarters and worked them in chains like beasts of burden. In the end, they brutally killed them to keep secret. She is gripping her son's hand, wishing his return home alive. Despite the earnest wish of the wife and children, the man could not return home, a village in apricot blossoms, but was left in an alien land as forlorn remains. The Chikuma coal mine in Kyushu, Japan, the then undertaker of a third Japan's coal production. So many Koreans were killed here too. The Japanese did not return the remains home. Instead, they resort to sanctions against Korea, making much ado that the remains of a Japanese woman sent back by Korea from the humanitarian stand are forged. More than one million Koreans did not return home after being drafted to Japan. But the Japanese reactionaries escape apology and compensation for the terrible atrocity. They removed the expression of forcible drafting from history textbooks. Such an act of falsifying history utterly discloses the low moral baseness unique to Japan. The government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea definitely stated that if Japan continue to inflict sanctions on the DPRK, talking about what they call national feelings, it would regard their act as war declaration. Hainan Island at the southern tip of China when the world was denouncing the baseness of Japan, another massacre of Koreans was disclosed here. The road to the Chandran Koreans Tunnel, or the Tunnel of Thousand Koreans in English. Many Koreans worked here allegedly for the country and were killed at the construction site. Now, there were no survivors among the Koreans but it is called Korean villages as ever. Even the Japanese visitors do not repress surprise and indignation. Corpses were found in tens or hundreds here and there on Hainan Island. They exposed the appalling scene of the murder of Koreans. piece of iron stuck in the skull. A skull broken by beating. Deprived of the country, they were buried alive in an alien land. Their bodies were torn by the bayonet and the bones broken. Their remains expose the never pardonable crimes of the barbarian Japs. Pillboxes near the Sanma airfield of the former Japanese Navy. And the traces of runway in the airfield. Railways between Shilu and Ba Chao ports. All these traces of crime committed against Korean draftees can never be erased. The 
there is a tunnel for the Japanese army at a Korean village. The tunnel made by Koreans under the instruction of a Japanese commando unit also tells of the gruesomeness of the Koreans. The resident on the spot unanimously testify their wretched state. Hands tied, a Korean was hung on a big tree and beaten. Japanese soldiers were beating him before and behind. They cut off his head. They placed heads of the killed Koreans on the roadside. They hung Koreans on a big tree after binding their wrists and beat them to death. The Koreans were writhing and screaming. The bitter grudge on the Japanese reactionaries' attempt to erase their unprecedented crimes and history is reflected on the monuments. After provoking the Pacific War, the Japanese took Korean young and middle-aged men to Southeast Asia and some islands on the Pacific under the names of Patriotic Drafting Corps, Volunteers, Students' Corps, etc. They were forced to slave labor as workers attached to the military. When supply routes were cut nearing their defeat in the 1940s, the Japanese cannibals on the remote South Pacific Island slaughtered Koreans like beasts and ate their flesh. The South Army Command gave them a legal guarantee. The New Korea Times carried the testimony as follows. On February 23, 1944, Japanese soldiers on German island of the Pacific killed two Koreans and ate their flesh, saying that was whale meat. When protested, the Japanese massacred over 140 Koreans and ate them. Japanese cannibalism was really appalling in the mid-20th century, the era of civilization. Japanese imperialism was defeated on August 15, 1945. But the beasts did not forsake their brutality. Bleeding in defeat, the Japanese imperialists hatched a scheme to murder a large number of Koreans. The Japanese beasts of the Kominato Command worked out a wicked plot to bury at sea the Koreans who were returning home with the joy of liberation and thus reduce their disgrace of defeat even a bit. The Sea of Maizuru, where the ship Ukishima Maru was blown up by the beastly Japs. Japanese witnesses say it was the 24th of August 1945 while picking up marine products I was returning home in the evening for relay 
it seemed that a large ship was coming in. Suddenly, I heard a boom. I approached the spot of accident and heard cries of distress. I recognized they were Koreans. For over a week, corpses flowed down day and night. In an hour, I saw 14 corpses flowing down. I think you would guess how many corpses were there. When the ship was blasted, I looked down at the fold. I found people being drawn into a whirlpool, screaming. Because I saw that, I hit the command as a murderer. Sucked by the current of water, women and children were dying. I could not bear to witness the sight. At that time, the Japanese government and military announced that it was an explosion by a mine laid by the U.S. Army. If so, the steel plate of the ship should have been torn from without. But the photographing proved the blast took place from within. According to the premeditated plot to kill Koreans, the Ukishima Maru carrying them sailed along the coast of Japan and reached the Maizuru Bay. The Japanese imperialists should have atoned for their unpardonable crimes against Korean draftees and opened the route for them to return home. Instead, in reprisal for their defeat, they killed the Koreans who had scarcely escaped death from the grinding toil. The Titanic, known as the biggest sinking incident in history, recorded a death toll of 1,503. The Japanese imperialists killed several thousands of Koreans ruthlessly by sinking the Ukishima Maru. Evidences prove that the officers escaped by boat in advance, and there were no mines there. But the Japanese government maintains even today that it was a blast by a mine of the U.S. Navy. This monument is a solidification of the grudge of the souls buried in the water. Seeing this photograph he had kept in his bosom, he longed so ardently for his home village, but today is laid here. The soul of a child who gripped the skirt of his mother with joy of the news on returning home is now bitterly denouncing the crimes of the Japanese imperialists. Hong son -ok, chairperson of the Korean Measure Committee for Compensation for the Victims of Japanese Army Comfort Women System and Forcible Drafting, says, In the past, Japan drafted hundreds of thousand women from Korea and other countries of Asia to use them as sexual slaves for the army. But the high-ranking politicians of Japan do not make an apology and compensation for the beastly atrocities. Instead, they continue to utter unpardonable remarks that the women were money-makers and prostitutes. This arouses indignation of the Korean and other people of the world. The vicious Japs introduced the comfort women system unprecedented in the world history of war and took more than 200,000 Korean women to comfort their soldiers. 
under the pretext of avoiding the demoralization of the Japanese army and venereal diseases and heightening their fighting will, the Japanese government and military made a policy of the sexual slave system for the army. They drafted or kidnapped at random many Korean women ranging from teenagers to married women. Houses were to be found in Korea, China, Japan proper, Myanmar, the Philippines, Indonesia, Ireland and the Pacific and all other places where the Japanese army were stationed. There, the pure Korean girls were trampled down ruthlessly by the Japanese wolves. They put down the slightest protest in a cold-blooded manner. The survivors say, One day, a girl protested, saying she'd better die than troubled by them dogs. At this, Japanese soldiers cut her neck, arms and legs, and put her body into a straw bag. At the horrible sight, the girls there screamed and fainted. Chimdal Yun, born at Chilgok, North Gyeongsang Province, in 1927. One day, the Japanese let all of us gather and stripped the girl stark naked and bound her tightly. Then they cut off her breasts, threatening to kill any runaway that way. We Koreans are not what we were. We 70 million Koreans want to hit Japan more powerfully than the atom bomb dropped in Hiroshima. In December 2000, an international women's court took place in Tokyo to judge war crimes of Japan. And there were survivors of combat women's system for the Japanese army from eight countries in Asia and delegates of over 30 countries and international organizations to deliberate on the crimes of sexual slavery. They unanimously disclosed the intolerable outrages committed by Japanese beasts. Men of the old Japanese army, who had been involved in the crimes, testified to the direct responsibility of their government and the military, and to their forcible drafting and the atrocity of the Japanese army. The court convicted the then Japanese king Hirohito of crime and demanded an apology and compensation for the comfort women issue from the Japanese government. It was a stern judgment of the 200,000 Korean women and other victims of different countries. But it is not enough to heal the wounds inflicted on the Korean and other Asian people. The survivors of the outrage are burning their hearts with indignation at the Japanese imperialists who trampled down the youth. History.
country will surely judge the shameless act of those who deny the unheard of crimes and distort history. Tok Island, a part of Korean territory from time immemorial. There is evident records that Tok Island was a part of Korean, which date back to the early 6th century when Japan was engaged in internal conflict. The Japanese reactionaries, however, instituted Day of Tok Island and are making shameless outbursts that Tok Island belongs to Japan. Crying for Great East Asia prosperity, Japan perpetrated manifold crimes against the Korean and other Asian people. Today too, Japan is denying all its crimes of aggression and rushing headlong into a dangerous political and military adventure. During the Korean War in the 1950s, Japan sent to the Korean front scores of thousand troops in U.S. military uniforms by stealth and converted its land into a supply base and repair base for the U.S. Army, thereby plunging the Korean War into a more terrible catastrophe. The Korean people will never forget it. The Korean army people clearly remember the inerasable crimes of Japan and are firmly determined to settle final counts with the Japanese reactionaries. Under the Sungun leadership of Kim Jong-il, chairman of the National Defense Commission of the DPRK, the Korean army and people will totally sweep out of this planet the Japanese reactionaries, the sworn enemy, and thus foil their scheme of reinvasion. <laughs>